Thank you so much. Thank you, Provost Amaritas. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the class of 2015. Welcome to your university and to your new home. Beginning today, we're no longer a suitor or a nice place to visit on your college tour. We are your home and we are your family. I am so very honored to serve as your president and I want you to make it a priority to say hello to me or better yet, to get to know Patricia and me early during your stay at Carolina. I extend my thanks to the parents and to the other relatives of our new students who are here today. You have done a great job in nurturing and in teaching these young people. I know that because the class of 2015 is the smartest and the most committed incoming class in the history of our university. I've heard this time and time again from our admissions counselors and from our university ambassadors. I think we may be soon learning that they're also the loudest. williams Bryce Stadium and the Colonial Life Arena are going to be rocking places this fall, aren't they? <clears throat> Students, I stand before you today as an upperclassman. You might call me a rising senior. That's because I, I started my first year, as was told to you, in 2008, and therefore I'm starting my fourth year today. I'm not on the four-year plan, but I want you to be on it. <laughs> my first three years were so eventful, and this year promises to be very, very exciting for me as well. But let me tell you, there will never be another year like my first year as president of Carolina. And you are now beginning what will be, and I guarantee you this, one of the most memorable years of your lives. Let me offer a few observations about your class and then only a few words of encouragement. You can take them as friendly advice from an upperclassman. First, about you. Your incoming class represents 40 states and 13 countries. 55% of you are women. That mirrors a national trend, by the way. I'm amazed and delighted to tell you that we have 19 sets of twins and one set of triplets in the incoming class this year. If the parents of the triplets are here, I'd like to see you after class today. I'd like to ask you what you really feel like today. I also want to tell all of you how quickly the University of South Carolina is rising in the most important national rankings. Just this month, the Princeton Review listed USC among the best institutions for undergraduate inst uh, education. Only about 15% of America's 2,500 four-year colleges are profiled in that periodical. Earlier this year, the Princeton Review and USA Today listed USC as a top 50 value in public higher education, and we were the only South Carolina university on that list. Of either, even greater revel, relevance is that we're among the nation's top research institutions according to the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching, and the only one, again, in South Carolina to have that very high research classification, and one of only 23 public universities in the entire U.S. recognized both for very high research on one hand and significant community engagement on the other. Rankings are nice, but they probably mean more to faculty, staff, and even the alumni than they mean to you, the students. You care more about, and you should care more about, the opportunities that you'll find here and how you'll spend your time. That brings me to the advice and the encouragement I promised you earlier. Number one, learn to love walking on this campus. 
Take advantage of every chance you get to walk the campus. Personally, I strive for 10,000 steps or more each day, and I wear a pedometer, as I am right now. Exercise will keep your mind sharp and your attitude upbeat, and I know you'll discover places that would remain unnoticed if you were in your car. One place you cannot get to by car is the Caroliniana Garden. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it has a lovely fountain. It's quiet there. Take a walk and try to find it. Number two, communicate directly with your professors as well as with your roommates, sweet suite mates, and or housemates. The New York Times reported recently that roommates are texting and tweeting to each other a lot more, but talking less. No surprise. And I think that's fine for some things, like a text that might say, Renee, mom visiting tonight. Pick up empty Cheetos bags under bed. But maybe not for other things, like, Renee, can't sleep. Please use third floor lounge on cell phone after midnight. I know it seems harder to do face to face, and it is harder to do, but trust me, it usually works out better that way. Third, and this has already been offered to you as advice, learn to bounce back from disappointment. Be resilient in the face of adversity. I'm not the first to tell you, it's been already said before today, that there will be plenty of adversity while you're in college. Some will just come your way, an issue with a family member or a friend perhaps. At other times, you'll bring it on yourself, for example, by not preparing enough for an exam. You can't prevent all adversity. The real challenge, though, is how you respond to it. You shouldn't fear failure. You need to pledge to be resilient, to learn from that experience, and to become a better person for it. And then, quickly, please, move on. And when you face that challenge that you just can't bounce back from on your own, when you need a little help, let me tell you that we have so many caring, compassionate people who can advise you and guide you and mentor you. Simply put, every single person who works at this university is here to help you. So there you have it. Walk a lot, be direct in your communication, <clears throat> and be resilient. You've chosen a university where the faculty love to teach and where the staff care about you. We're a big university, but every student faculty member and staff member here is part of your new family. You have responsibilities, of course, as well. So do the right thing. If you're walking down a path and see trash in front of you, pick it up. If you see anyone that needs a hand and you feel you might be able to help them, offer some help. Get involved in the over 300 campus clubs and organizations. Parents, you have, you're leaving us today with the pride of your families. We pledge that they will live in a safe, clean, and exciting environment. They'll be challenged, as, as has been said, over and over again. When you next see them, look for early changes, early signs that maturity bring for the values we expect them to embrace and the hopes you and I share for their lives of leadership and service to the nation we love. We are so delighted that you have stayed for convocation, and parents and families, we wish you a safe journey home. A brief anecdote about a well-known South Carolinian, Roger Milliken, from Spartanburg. Many of you may have heard of him. He passed away earlier this year. And there's a story about when he dropped his youngest daughter off at the train station as she was leaving for school. He was on the platform and she was on the train. They could not hear each other. Roger Milliken picked up a stick on the platform and in the dust, in the dust on the platform, he traced one word, 
one word only, and that word was participate. He was asking her to be a participant, not only in college, but in life. Let me tell you, students, opportunity will rarely come to you in a tweet or a text or an email. We, we are, of course, still the best land of opportunity, but you need to meet opportunity halfway. You need to go and seek it, and the best way to do that is by participating, not in everything that comes in front of you, but in many things that come before you. So students today, the entire legacy of our university becomes yours. Cherish it and honor it. In everything that you do as a citizen of Carolina, remember that the legacy you leave will be as treasured, as worthy, and as noble as the one that is being given to you today. When you shake my hand at commencement in four years, you'll have experienced this, the citizenship, civility, openness, honor, compassion, fitness, and fun that is Carolina. Until then, I'll be your good neighbor and fellow citizen. Patricia and I love living on the horseshoe, and frankly, we love being with students as much as any other aspect of our job. I look forward to this new academic year and to getting to know each of you better. Good luck, Godspeed, and go Gamecocks. Thank you very much. <laughs>